Hey, Hollywood fans, welcome to another show. This is episode 23 of the 2022 season. Now, as you've seen for the last couple of weeks, it's been a little bit quiet, and that's just to allow ourselves a little bit of time to catch our breath because it's going to be wild from here on out. The racing month of August has three events back to back. That's the GXCC's round number five. It's going to be the round number four of the Farm Jam, and it's going to be round number five of the 424. So they are all back to back, wall to wall. It's going to be crazy for me and the LiveX lads. They're going to be burning up the highway, burning up the film, and making all of you beautiful people as famous as we possibly can. Now let's get ourselves ready for the first of those shows. It's gonna be GXCC round number five from Lakoa Lodge. A Little bit of history about Lakoa Lodge. Hasn't been raced since GOC days. So that's pre-Lawrence Mahoney and Marilyn owning the GXCCs and a long time before Miranda and Vion owned it. The franchise was called the GOCs. It was run by Hannah Simon at the time. Yeah, famous Hannah Simon from the quad racing category back in 2016. So for this show, it's gonna be the first time many of the riders actually lined up this is Lakoa Lodge going back in time. Enjoy. All this GXCC racing action is proudly brought to you by VW Mastercars Hatfield. When the winter sun started to climb into the sky, it was a new venue. Well, a new venue for many people, but everyone knew the legend of Lakoa Lodge. This place hasn't been raced or visited since 2016, and Vian and the GXCC crew decided this was a great way to kick off the official second half of the 2022 championship. Round five, Lakoa Lodge. We were back. Bright and early this morning out here at Lakoa Lodge, uh, just outside Feliz. Um, very fortunate to come back here. We haven't been, uh, we, there's been no racing here since 2016, and uh, what a fantastic uh, piece of land to work with. Uh, so, yeah, looking forward to today. And the guys are uh, going to have their work cut out. This place has had a lot of rain, so we had to work around some of the wet patches. Um, but they will have some, some wet patches that they need to deal with, but at least it's not going to be a case of getting stuck in the mud. As Vian went through his pre-race chat to tell all the juniors and the quads what they were in for, we decided to go down into the pits and also chat to the riders to see what they thought was ahead for their day. Um, yeah, I'm very glad to be back. It's a nice route. Always a lucky race here. I had some problems on the bike on the previous race, so it's a stock standard, new new old bike, standard suspension, standard engine, so this is going to be very interesting. Uh, I expect the, the rocks and stuff is going to be heavy on the arms, and yeah, but let's take it as it goes. Ik is bijna opgewonden voor vandaag. Het um, is een baie lekker baan van wat ons kan onthou van 2016 af. Uh, kan niet wachten om te beginnen. Laat ons niet maar net veilig wees, hard rijden en die dag klaar maken. Dat zal wel ons weer worden vandaag. Actually, I haven't been here before. Um, I only started in, in 2018 doing cross country, so I actually haven't been here. I've heard lots of stories, so new new territory for me today, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Look, I know the area. The area is very rocky, it's very dry. Um, I believe there's some deep water crossings, but I, I hear they've taken them out. So, yeah, we'll just go easy today and then try not to break the bike and get to the end. As always, with the second half of the season, who was going to turn up? Who was still in it to win it for the championship? A modest rider gate going off the Q1s with just two riders going out of the box. That was Stefanos Muller and Franco Pretorius. So it was going to be a Can-Am versus a Yamaha. On the season, one of the surprise packages of the tour has been Franco Pretorius and the Yamaha, the ex Keegan Hammond championship winning machine. So we know the bike is good and the rider is getting better and better. The biggest gate was going to be all about the Q2s, where everyone was going to go out and chase things down. Henny Macau Jr. has been desperately looking for some form and consistency on the ride. A no-show from John John Aylwood this time around after he took his inaugural win at the previous round. Henny Macau looked like he was going to run and hide with a big 4x4 of Darby Van Staden giving chase this time around. 4x4s were going to be a big story on the day with massive entries coming in. 
for the Quad Masters. Small entries this time again once more, but it was Jaco Kricher getting chased down by Henny Macau Sr. They would go out and open up the track for the rest of the guys who were chasing from behind, and that was a stacked field of veteran racers. The Masters saw Jaco and Big Henny go at it in the early laps. For the Quad Veterans, it was almost a 4 by 4 gate with massive entries coming in. Johan Bromkos got his big first hole shot of his racing career with a ton of big competitors. And I think there was a big reason that they all went for the 4x4s. They know about the rocks that come into play towards the end of the racing loop. The rear-wheel drive bikes were down there in fourth and fifth place with Brian Herbst, the championship points leader, out of the points in the early running. He was going to have to plow the traffic. For the ladies' gate, Liesl Barnard was back on the 4x4. Remember, she can go between bikes. She's got a choice of weaponry. Most of the season, she's been on the rear-wheel drive 450. This time, she went for the big 1,000cc 4x4. She pulled the whole shot, and then in the early laps, it was going to be a dice between herself and Kareen Thiessen, who is the lady on form at the moment. It looked like Berger had a stall out early on. Our championship points leader was going to have to come from outside of the podium positions on lap number one. And then with our quad wow racing category, as we've seen almost the whole way through the championship racing season, the two lads coming out of old school customs would go out to see what they could do against this incredibly tough terrain. Unfortunately for the wild class guys, they had some mechanical issues out there, a puncher, and just the standard option issues that come with quad and rock off-road racing, put them to the sidelines. They would have a short day out at Lakoa Lodge. Back on the line, and we turned our attention to the junior gates. This championship is heating up dramatically. The senior 85s, the smallest gate we've seen coming out of this category the whole way through the 2022 championship racing season, with Jaden Boyce on the privately entered Kawasaki getting his first hole shot of his racing season. Championship points leader Clarkie was going to be up there in a number two spot nice and early on. Doesn't seem to have too much pressure on him at the moment, just easing his way into each of the events as we travel the length and breadth of the GXCC circuit. The biggest gate on the day, though, was the Junior 85s. Biggest gate by far. And we started talking about the J500 of Bruno Nibua, who's put on a huge growth spurt in the middle of the season. Remember, he is going to be moving up into the senior 85s next year. Right now, he is by far the man to beat as he left the rest of the riders in his wake. On the 65cc gate, it was going to be elbows up, bar banging racing action. Championship points leader Mackenzie Bam not getting the best gate, only coming out of the queue in a number five, leaving GJ Kutsia, John Luke van der Vestesen, and the rest of the little pinners to go out with the elbows up and see what they could do. Not a great gate for Jake the Snake either, but the Kawasaki man would come through in the early laps to start picking up the pace and clicking the gears. On the 50cc gate, the dude to beat as he has been the whole way through the season is Declan Richards, but in his pink Thor Fast Boys kit, Campbell Dupria gets his best ever gate coming out of the 50ccs and runs high in the number two spot in the early stages, putting Vilko Deploy down to third place and allowing Declan Richards to run and hide. We'll start our focused race action on the juniors and chat to Vion about the track and what the juniors are in for. Yeah, so today the, the juniors have got a 14 and a half kilometer loop and we're keeping them inside the compounds of Lakoa Lodge. So they're not gonna go out over any main roads. Uh, this area is very known for its, its rocky areas and so on. So they're gonna have a couple of places where they need to deal with some loose rocks. They're gonna go through a, a dip with a bit of mud and then they have to climb over the edge of the copy on, on the other side there, but we've got guys to help the little ones if they do uh, tend to fall over or whatever the case may be. But uh, staying inside the compounds, they're gonna have a couple of sections that's uh, nice, wide and open, but as soon as they come back again, uh, they're gonna see uh, a couple of rocks again. So for the juniors, we're definitely gonna keep the speed down today. Out on the course, let's see what we've got for the kids. We'll pick up on the racing action starting with the smaller bloods on the 50cc gate. Travis Levy just out of the top five, so just missing out on being on the show, as it was Lincoln Daystler, who even though he took a little dive, he had a marshal and a little helping hand out there to pick him up. He walks away with the J125 in a number five spot. Really looked like he enjoyed the little bit of motocross action that allowed the kids to come close to the pits 
also gave the spectators something to watch out for. In the morning session, the wind wasn't too bad. It did pick up towards the end of the morning, though. Campbell de Priya, even though he came out the gate in a very tasty number two spot, unfortunately started to free fall throughout the rest of the day. Couldn't keep up with the pace of the kids that ran inside of the top three. But de Priya once again brings home the bacon, a number four finish. Maybe not a track that suited his more flowing riding style. Fourth place, though, still keeps him in the championship hunt and puts those ever important points on the plate as we roll into the second half of the season now. Liam Forster gets one of his best rides going with a number three spot. It's great to see that we have new blood coming forward. Remember, the 50cc gate is always a fast moving terrain. These kids don't stay on the 50s too long before they move up into the 65s and no doubt towards the end of the season. We'll start seeing one or two more different 50cc riders coming in and testing their metal against the GXCC Massive. Declan Richards getting himself up there into a number two spot. He came into this event as a standout points leader, but remember, we have a rider that does come good in the second half of the season, and that's exactly what happened here. We'll get to him just now, but right now, Declan Richards with his second place should still hang on to his championship points lead as he rolls forward into round number six. Richards will not be happy with having to lose here, but it's a very rare loss and second place is not a bad pill to swallow for the dude that's gone almost undefeated this season so who beat him it's this dude we saw the same thing last year as we rolled forward into the late winter months and clicked the gears into the second half of the championship racing tour Volko deploy put his hat in the ring and he almost dominated the second half of the season completely deploy now once again coming good late on in the 2022 tour Second place and a muscle-bound win for one of the biggest kids on the 50cc tour. He has been going back and forth with the 65s on a couple of other different events, but for the GXCCs, he commits to the 50. On the 65cc gate, GJ Kutsia dropped down to a number six, so unfortunately he doesn't make the show this time around, but he is still good most of the time. He is inside of the top six, so for a championship point of view in the long game, not too bad. Liam Skippers is starting to really find his form on the 65cc gate. Remember, beginning of the season, he got picked up by the big Harry Throbler Honda Torcroft and Sleepover squad. Fifth place is a very nice position for him. He's not far away from making the big move up to the 85s. You can see he's a big dude now. Ewan Furry up into a number four. Ewan Furry starting to make a name for himself on the 65cc gate and find his comfort. A lot of kids said this was one of the coolest tracks. It really had a mixture of everything. A little bit of mud, but nothing too gnarly. Most of the kids came home nice and clean. The motocross track was super fun for most of the kids out there as they do put in a lot of time on the MX tracks when it comes to practice. Werner Klanems has been a rider on the bounce at the moment. Seems to be able to turn his hand to pretty much every single format of cross-country hair scramble or a little bit of mild enduro racing. Klanems riding out of Rubine Racing Squad. Third place for him. We'll see him move up to start challenging for the top placings on the podium come the end of the championship racing tour. But he was quite a long way off the pace of the top two. The top two put on a show for themselves and the crowd on the sidelines. Jake the Snake Pretorius coming off a bad gate, having to plow some traffic in the early kilometers. But once he did that, it was a two-horse race between himself and Mackenzie Bam as they went elbows up, bar banging racing the whole way through the rest of the two-hour format. Equally matched, but as they say, only one man can win. Or in this case, and this championship, only one woman, and that's Mackenzie Bam. She is pretty much unstoppable on the 2022 Championship Racing Tour. Jake pushed her pretty hard on the Pepsi Plastics Racing Kawasaki, but it was Mackenzie Bam getting the job done and rocking and rolling. Could she actually go ahead and clean the score sheet? She is really in charge of this championship on the 65s in 2022. For the Junior Wilds, they were the last riders to go out of the gate and cool to give these guys a little bit of airtime on Hollywood Hills here on the show. One little bike and our youngest and smallest rider gets some of the limelight. Reed Forster enjoying his time out there, putting in a full racing two-hour format. And his buddy who was on the gate with him, Ulrich Ferry, who is just developing as a wild-class racing rider, but will be moving up into the full 85cc Junior gate going forward into 2023. Well done to our Junior Wilds who were out there making it count. 
for our Junior 85s. Great to see this massive gate happening out there. Hannes de Beer getting a number six ride going with Matthias Tienpont. This rider and this family, in fact, the Tienpont's are on point once again, bringing home the bacon with a number five ride with Willem Boerter just ahead on a number four position. Tienpont, though, starting to really understand what it is to go cross country and hair scramble racing. Willem Boerter, one of those riders who likes to dance around on the bike, Nice and high, elbows high, definitely been putting in a little bit of mid-season and mid-event practice to get himself on the moves. Fourth place for him, not too far off the tasty top threes. Throwing in a little bit of bar turn style there as well. John Bart Moritz, who has been the Kawasaki rider to beat on this gate for a couple of seasons now, looks like he's about to make the big move up into the pro senior 85s, but for now, third place puts him out there as the top Kawasaki and still good numbers on the page for him for his championship aspirations. Drikus van der Merwe is a rider that's come not necessarily out of nowhere, but if you look at the riding style of this kid, he just looks like absolute poetry in motion. He's got an absolutely butter riding style, custom made for cross country racing, custom made for the GXCCs. And a second place right here shows what he is capable of. He may be one of those riders that can take the fight all the way to the top. But at this round, and on paper and on the timing sheets, it was Bruno Nibua who was all dominant for Rubine Racing. Look out, all the kid has got, and he has still got another season on the 85s as next year he moves up into the senior 85s. He is going to be tough to beat for the rest of the season on the junior 85s as Bruno Nibua stomps his authority over a very classy field. Not only did he take the win in the junior 85s, but his time come the end of the day would have put him inside the top three overall with all juniors counted, meaning he beat a lot of big players on the senior 85 gate as well. Good job to Bruno. Moving up then into the big class on the GXCC senior 85s, Jean-Dre Formark down to a number six, and our hole shotter, Jaden Boyce, had some issues later on in the race. He had a very strong lap number one and two, but unfortunately some issues out there and a couple of well-placed rocks, unfortunately, knocking him down and dropping him down out of the big points that he wanted to sit in. Number five, though, is still a very respectable finish. Number four, just up the road from him, one of the guys that has also come on strong and found his groove, especially in the mid part of the 2022 championship, riding for triple four motorsports, Lohan LaRue. Looked like he had some issues on his bike, a little bit of loose flapping plastics there, but it didn't seem to slow him down too much. Obviously, he went down off camera, but he was still able to control the rest of the race and take a solid number four ride. Nathan Sinclair waving the flag for Gas Gas. He has come on strong. No one really counted him for the championship playing, but he has been really doing the work, keeping his head down and just getting it done. Third place for him, as he was really running the pace of the top two guys in the early running as well. Franco Ferri on the 400 was just up the road from him and Sinclair and Ferri were pretty much joined at the hip most of the way through the race as the eventual race winner gapped them and left them to pick up the scraps. Last year it was all about the KTMs and then for 2022 when Franco Ferri, the famous J400, moved across to Husky as he stepped up onto the bigger bikes and started to find the sweet spot. Up the road though, another rider out of the Husqvarna squad riding out of Spherical Logistics it is Clarky, Brandon Clark, didn't get the big hole shot, but decided to give himself a bit of a challenge on the day to go through the traffic and fight it out hard. In fact, he did get passed by one or two of the junior 85s, but he is playing for the long game. Remember, he's out there to try and nail down not only a club, not only a regional, but also a national championship in 2022. Clarky is on the money right now, bringing home the bacon at every single round and looking effortless in doing so as well. Another checkers. Clarky still the man to beat. Here's confirmation of Clarky taking the win over Faree and Sinclair with Lohan LaRue and those flapping plastics just beating out on Jaden Boyce and Jean-Dre Formark takes us to the number six. In the junior 85s, the biggest gate by far on the day. It was Bruno Nibua beating out on Van der Merwe and Moritz with Boerta, Tiempont and De Beer taking us to the number six. On the junior wilds, just two riders entered, the 85 gas gas of Ulrich Ferry and the baby twist and go 50 of Reed Foster taking the number two spot. On the 65s, check how close that was come the end of play. Mackenzie Bam and Jake the Snake in a class of their own out front, beating out on Clanham's Ferry Skippers and Kutsia. And the 50 cc's 
gets a big win to start off the second half of the tour for Volko Deploy, beating out on Richards, Foster, Dupria, Doister, and Levy. With the junior section done and dusted, we get ourselves ready for the quads and chat to Vian about the course. Yeah, so the quads, uh, their loop is uh, 48 and a half, nearly 49 kilometers in length. Um, they're also going to start within the compounds here of the Lakao Lodge, uh, over the Kopi, the famous hill climb over the Kopi here, down the other side, across the, the main dirt road, and then they're going to have the most beautiful section all along the, the Bowl River, coming back down over a bridge, back on the other side of the river. So, yeah, it's just the most beautiful winding roads next to the river. Uh, nice and open, they're going to have fast stuff uh, towards the, the far end of the farm, uh, the small points where the millies are and coming back across and then they're going to have quite a few rocks to deal with. Uh, it's going to get very bumpy uh, on the last way coming back into the pits. Bigger challenge for the quads, bigger course and the wind was starting to pump. They would go up, down and over all the copies that surrounded the area of Lakoa Lodge. Judith Crooker, who has been rock solid on the season, had her issues later on in the day and drops down to a number six finish with Ursula Statler walking away, even though she had big problems on the day as well with a number five finish. This was a tough track for the ladies out there. Long course, not necessarily the coldest day out there, but that wind really picked up and caused some problems towards the end of play. Candice DeSantos has been doing an incredible job this season as well. The DeSantos family really supporting almost every single category of the GXCCs. The Santos up there just outside of a podium position in a number four. Celeste Berger, as a championship runner, looks like she is playing the long game and playing a clever game at that as well. Didn't get the start that she wanted, but she didn't get flustered. She just allowed the race to come to her third place and still good numbers on the page, still in with a shout of walking away with the ladies quad title come the end of the day. Green Teeson has been one of those riders we've been watching develop and just something has clicked in 2022. This lady is racing almost every single tour that she can get her hands on and the seat time and training is definitely starting to pay dividends. She was dicing it out for the win but there was no matching the thunder of Liesl Barnard. Remember, Liesl has the chance and option to swing a leg over the rear wheel drive 450 or swing out the big dog. For Lakoa Lodge with the rocks, and the wild terrain. It was always going to be 450 territory for her, and Liesl Barnard gets herself back on top to try and see what she can do about nailing down the big title this season. On the quad veterans, it was fun to see so many of the big dogs out there on the 4x4s. Peter Kursen getting it out there inside of a number six. And just up the road from him, Swayze Blicknort with his rear view mirror still attached. Looking to see who was coming from behind. At this stage, no one. Fifth place was him, wrapped up in a bow. Shout out to Peter Kursen with the number six ride as well, taking a big crash towards the end of the race and still getting on and getting the finish done. Swayze with the number five and our hole shotter, Johan Bronkhorst, getting a number four ride going. Just couldn't hang with the high speed and pace of the guys that ran in the ones, twos and threes. But he takes the honor of the top finishing four by four with a fourth place. So is the rear wheel drive 450 machines that ran the numbers up front. In fact, some of them ran even bigger machinery. Francois Smallberger, who just could not let it lie. He has been out of racing action for something like nine or 10 months, deciding to go car racing. And then halfway through the season, couldn't wait to get back on a quad. He's been developing nicely. Third place here shows that the old guy has still got what it takes. Smallberger will be very happy with that ride. And from a small burger to a regular burger and the man that is defending and reigning champion coming out of the inaugural running of the Quad Veterans Championship in 2021. For 2022, small burger has his work cut out, but second place shows that he has still got the form, speed and the agility to go out there and chase down what he can do against the very best on this gate. Remember behind him, small burger and then a gaggle of four by fours, but up front, just one man to beat for the rest of the season. Small burger though, is in great form, but no one's faster at the moment than Brian Herbst. The 4-2-1 racing pro seems to have got rid of all these gremlins that hounded him for the last couple of seasons. This year, even though he has taken one or two crashes throughout the season, he is still fast enough to walk away with the big wins, and Herbst had to plow the field and make a lot of passes on lap number one to get himself out there and run clear air. 
Herbst does what he can to see how many of the Q2 riders he can beat. But this time around, he was clear of the rest of his racing category. On the Quad Masters, with a small entry this time around, it was Roxy De Santos walking away with the number four ride. Our hole shotter, Jaco Kricker, who also plays an incredible long game, seems to have put a little bit more effort and set up into his quad this season as well. Third place will show good form as well. He did have those mechanical issues at the early part of the season, but he seems to be climbing the ladder once again. Up the road from him was Henny Macau Sr. This guy knows what it is to go quad flat out racing. He's one of those riders that makes the big 700 Raptor look like a little 125. Not necessarily the style of track that he likes to race on. And it did show in the results. You'd expect to see him walking away with big wins. But at this round, second place was the best that the big guy could do. Henny Macau Sr. in the number two spot. Meaning Fernando De Santos is on a bit of a burner at the moment. De Santos is in with a shout of the championship this year as well. Just seems to not have a problem on his bike. Punches aren't coming, crashes aren't coming. What is coming is points and wins. Fernando de Santos in sublime form as we roll forward into the last couple of rounds of the season. The Q2s was always going to give us spectacular racing as it gave us the biggest quad gate of the morning session. Second place out the gate and one of the best 4x4s in the queue as well. Davi van Staden eventually dropping down to a number six come the end of the day as the pace started to pick up and the riders went through the gears. Rian Dick, as he said before the show went out, he was going to be out on a stock standard machine, so he was definitely going to be feeling this one. Not great suspension, and he would just have to tough it out and play the championship game. Fifth place for him. Reinhard Rass has been one of the riders that's been on everyone's lips this season. He's starting to really show his form at a couple of the events that we go to. This was a tough race for him. He does like it a little bit more wide open and flat out. Maybe the rocks caught him out this time. Fourth place still shows that he can bring home some good points when the day is tough. The L100 of Henny Blicknot has also been one of those riders that has maybe surprised a couple of people and himself. He gets the big 700 going, stayed out of trouble, didn't have any issues and walks away with one of his best finishes of the season. Third place and inside of the top 10 in the overalls for all the quads when the categories were measured come the end of the day's racing. Tina Scotzer in second place. This rider is out there on the one and only big Honda. The 700cc Honda is absolutely dialed in. A perfect setup for Tina Scotza. Something to do with that independent rear suspension and the way the rider is going at the moment. Second place and really not too far off the win. The win this time around going to Hannes Simon. That's something we've said many, many times through the last 10 to 15 years of quad championship racing. But this time around, it's the first time we see him in many years. Rolling out on the Banshee. The Screaming Banshee Smoker. Incredible to hear those pipes singing and this bike just about held together well enough for Hannes to get the job done. In the Q1s, it was Stefanus Muller who unfortunately had to take second fiddle this time around. Remember, out of the gate, just two riders going out to race against each other on the Q1 Premier 450 category. Muller and the Can-Am down to a number two spot, but still, in great form for the championship. These guys are pretty much measuring themselves against the Q2s, where the overall and the big win went to Hannes Simon. So no real surprise to see who walked away with the win in the Q1s. It was that kid on the Yammy. Franco Pretorius gapped off the front. Stefanos Muller was stuck in the dust and after about two laps, could not see the back end of this Yamaha anymore. The L9 of Franco Pretorius is such a cool little humble kid, really knows what he's doing. Him and his dad go out there racing all the way, traveling from Rustenburg at every single event. His dad walked away with a cool result off his gate and championed the 4x4s coming out of the quad veterans. Franco Pretorius walks away with the big win in the Q1s and recorded one of the top five times overall on the day coming out of the quad category. The winds were howling towards the end of the day, but the juniors and quads toughed it out to bring home the bacon. Two hour race for the juniors, three hours for the quads. That was the morning session. Job done. We caught up with a couple of quad rider reactions come the end of play, starting out with Brother Hannes. 
guys, uh, Lakoa Lodge is always a winner. It's one of the best events of the season. A bit rocky, I think, for most of the guys out there. A real uh, tough event. Broke my steering on this quad complete frame. Uh, broke on the last lap. So I just, just made it home in first place. No, the track is pretty good. I think the two wheelers are all going to have a lot of fun. The quads cleared it out very, very nicely for them. Um, myself and uh, the guys had a good dance this morning. Henny Michal had a great, great run. Such a pity his motor blew. Yeah, no, it's excellent. Happy to be back. I uh, had a bit of problems in the first lap. Uh, I rolled a bit. Uh, luckily, Anders helped me. And then just got back on and pushed hard. Uh, tried to catch up with them. He's just too fast on that banshee. <laughs> but yeah, it's great. The, the track itself has been amazing. I uh, really like enjoyed this track. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good. At the end, actually, my bike started bogging. Uh, luckily, I had a reserve. So I put on a reserve and finished. It's just so happy to be done. After we caught up with the riders, here's confirmation of those results in the Q1 two-horse race. It was Franco Pretorius and the Yamaha beating out on Stefanos Muller and that Can-Am. Moving forward then into the big gate of Q2s, Hannah Simon and the Screamer get the job done out front. So cool to see that Banshee hanging off the front with the big 700 Honda of Kotze. Then Blicknote, Ras, Dick and Van Staden. In the Quad Masters, Fernando DeSantis on a burner in 2022 for the championship with Henny Macau Sr. in second place, not enjoying the rocks. Same story for Crooker and Roxy De Santos in third and fourth. For the quad ladies, Liesl Barnard brought out the big dog, the 1000cc 4x4 Can-Am, beating out on Thiessen, Berger, De Santos, Statler and Crooker. Berger should still be in a good shape for the championship, but it's going to get tight now. Brian Herbst running off the front of this one once again for the veterans, ahead of Berger and Small Berger. An honourable mention to Johan Bronkhorst beating out the rest of the 4x4s, Blicknote and Gerson. We get ready for the big motorbike event and catch up with a couple of riders before the start gate. Yeah, I've spent the last six months in the gym. I'm fucking at top level fitness. <laughs> it's about my fifth ride since I broke my leg last April. And today they put me on a 450 at this circuit. So I don't know, we're gonna have some fun. Try to do one or two laps, see what it's like. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, this has always been a highlight venue when we were racing it back in GOC days. We haven't been here since GXCC started. So it's cool to be around here. Looking forward to it. It was always an interesting race, different terrain and ice mix. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, it's, uh, our class is fast, not a big class, but a fast class definitely. And yeah, I've been putting in the effort, the team's been brilliant. I mean, Ian and them have done so much work with me to make sure I've got the right equipment. So I've got no reason to say the bike's not going to do it. I've been putting in the work and yeah, hopefully we can bring it home. It's always the goal to go out and win, but the guys are all on form. It's great racing with them. And yeah, I just want to go have fun. Yeah, I think the last time we rode here was in 2016. I'm quite excited, happy that we got the opportunity to come race here again. And yeah. Uh, I'm excited. I think it's going to be a nice fast flowing race and that's the stuff that I enjoy. Yeah, well, if the quads enjoy it, it means it must be a bit flat and flat out. So, yeah, that's my type of uh, terrain that I enjoy. I know this place has got a bit of lurkers uh, here and there, but, but yeah, it's always a good one. I am. Last time it was a bit rough here. I went live from the storm and everything. Yeah, this time it's a bit better than the last. Uh, from what I've seen, it looks a bit fast, which is better than normal. So, but uh, expecting a bit of rocks here. Um, I'm feeling fit and good as as usual. Um, I also think that it is virgin. I don't. I never quite know where I've raced. <laughs> I'm just the rider. My pilot gets me all over the show, thanks to my dad. Um, but yeah, it looks it looks hard packed, dusty, rocky, something different. All we've ridden so far this year has been soft sand and whoops. So it's it's going to be different today. Yeah, for sure. Um, the GXCCs, I'm always looking to get a, a good result and it's it's great training for the Nationals as well and uh, awesome exposure for the team, so yeah, good to be here. Well, just from walking the start, it looks like there's going to be quite a few little rocks to catch us out, so we'll have to just take it easy on the first lap, but uh, I'm glad the wind is quite strong today to blow the dust out the way at least, so yeah, the dust shouldn't be too much of an issue, but we'll have to watch out for those rocks, I think, and just stay on, stay concentrating the whole day. Yeah, as always, um, I'm leading the one class uh, so far in the, in the GXCCs. Um, been loving the track so far, really having fun. Um, yeah, Mark's had a little bit of bad luck at the last race. He had some mechanicals, so it's going to be a good task for the rest of the year between him and I to see who can get the championship down. But uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to it and hoping for a good day. The riders were pumped, and as they headed to the start line, unfortunately, something else came over the horizon. A small felt fire became a big felt fire. 
and the decision was made by the GXCCs to wrap up shop and move everyone to safety as the fire grew and grew and the dust and wind started to swirl. It was a massive felt fire come the end. Mercifully, it did just skirt the edge of the pits and everyone was able to remove themselves with enough time and safety. No injuries were reported, but unfortunately, of course, no racing could continue for the rest of the day. It was the right decision by the GXCC management to call this one an air on the side of caution. We get ourselves ready for what's in store at round number six and bid adieu to the Coa Lodge. All this GXCC racing action was proudly brought to you by VW Mastercars Hatfield. Your fire only asks once and you've got to react quickly. GXCC and everyone there reacted in the right way. You don't mess with fire. The wind was absolutely raging there as well. So it was the right call. Everyone managed to wrap up. There was a small loss of a couple of tents, but nothing too major. Mercifully, as the GXCCs have put out on their press releases as well, no injuries. So the quads and the juniors got their day at the office, but the bonies didn't, unfortunately. So we're waiting for news from the GXCCs to see how they're going to react to this and how we're going to play out the rest of the championship. Remember, on paper right now, we have three remaining rounds with those guys. But well done to the GXCC guys. It was the right call on the day, and thankfully everyone got away with that one. But it was quite something to be there, and uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a tough day and a hard pull to swallow. But we really try and shine a positive light on any situation here at Hollywood Hills. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the top three runners on the bony categories in the championship as they stand right now because it is going to be a very tight championship. You can see we've basically lost two rounds of the season so far, so the rest is going to be all to play for. These are the numbers on the page. Let's start things out with the Pro-Am categories. In the OR1s, Timmy Dreyer leads out ahead of Henry Pretorius with Ashley Engelbrecht in a number three spot. In the OR2s, Elaine de Toy is absolutely pumped to be leading the title chase in the OR2s. He's in great form at the moment as he stays ahead of Rukas Fuchsia and Ben Stratum. Those are the one, two, threes in the Pro-Am OR2s. Pro-Am OR3s, Francois Smallburger, Baby Burger, Little Cheeseburger, the quarter pounder we like to call him. He's running off the front with Teek Harrower in second place and Albertine Pinar in third. Those are the one, twos and threes in the men's Pro-Ams. Moving forward then into the high school category as we start to click through the gears, Vian Wenzel still hanging on to that championship points lead. He's clearly going to be a rider that plays the long game. Derek Karam in the two spot with Baby Bester, that's Kerbis Bester, now moving up into third place after coming off that big win at the previous round. The ladies pros, Leah Haygate, unstoppable. She's off the front by miles, leading out on Colin Nibua and Nicole Duplessis. And in the Pro-Am ladies, Danelle Dalport still doing a good job to stay ahead of Natasha Tapuch and Shelley Tyler. Ladies and high schools, there we go. Let's look at the age group categories now as we move forward into the seniors, masters, and veterans. In the seniors, Kenny Gilbert, the king, unstoppable, unbeaten. He leads out ahead of the crazy Marco Kochi. And Glenn Ramsden now moves up into third place, his best championship positioning so far. In the masters, it's the Viking swinging his axe once again. Kerbis Yonk leads out on Francois Swanepoel and Peter Jordan. That's the one, twos, and threes there. And in the veteran category, the motocross crossover, Jeff Den leads out on the unstoppable Ern Slabbert and Johan Fari. Age group category is done. Let's move into the big banger, the pro category gates on the OR, one, twos, and threes. We'll start out with the threes this time around and go all the way to the top. Matty Wilson. The King at the moment racing off the factory KTM leads out ahead of Hayden Cole. Hayden had a rough ride last time around, so he's looking to come back from that. And then John John Buerta. So it's a nice mix there. You've got a KTM, a Honda, and a Kawasaki in the OR3s. In the OR2s, it's Scotty H, Scotty Haygate that leads out ahead of Kieran Fitzgerald. So both of the factory KTM riders supporting GXCC and running ones and twos with the devastator, Devin Smith, the best of the rest and the first of the Husqvarna's in third place. And then the big bangers, OR1s. Mikey Pentecost having some problems this year. So he's sitting in a number two spot. It's Gareth Cole that leads out. And it looks like Honda are trying to nail down some big championships this year. And then JC Nienarber, very solid in his approach to this season. Always comes good in the second half of the tour. He's sitting in a number three spot. So for the Bonies, that's where you are right now. Everyone knows the top three to chase down. Go get them. 
Let's change gears now and get ourselves ready though for next week's show. So we are getting ourselves excited and ready for the next round of the Farm Jams. This has been spectacular the whole way through the year. Great entries and Bocciabello gave us some really, really, really cool racing action from last year. The boys will be out there once again. And then next week, sorry, the week after that, should I say, we go straight into the next round of the 424s. That's going to be out at Verena. Same area that was used for the GXCCs, but a totally different layout of a track. We're going to be using different areas of that, so Jono will be giving some more information on that. But that's where we are. So this was a little bit of a, a tale of two stories coming out of the GXCCs. Great morning session and a little bit of a rough situation with that fire. But the cool thing is the right reaction was made. Stay tuned, guys. Next week, we go farm jamming once again from Bocciabello. That's going to be episode number 24. Laters.